10.3 can be a little tricky because there's some rules that you have to remember. What we're going to do is transform figures. That means we're not going to change what they look like. They're not going to change their shape. Like it isn't going to go from a square to a circle. It's just going to change its location on a coordinate plane. And there are three ways that we're going to do that. Translating the shape just simply means you're sliding it from one place to the next. A reflection means you're flipping it. You're either going to flip it over the y-axis or you're going to flip it over the x-axis. And there's a rule for each one of them. And then rotation means you're going to either take the figure, so if the figure is right here, you're going to rotate it counterclockwise or you're going to rotate it clockwise and, and make it in a different position. But there's rules for each one of them. Um, so as we go, I'll tell you the rules. Let's start with translating. Translating is the easiest because you're just sliding it. So it says um, the vertices of triangle ABC are negative 3, 7, uh, negative 1, 0, and C is 5, 5. It says graph the triangle and the image of triangle ABC after it translate four units to the right. That means that's your X value because you're going right and five units down. If it's going down, that means it's your Y value and it's going in a negative position. So all you have to do with these numbers is add them to these numbers. So we'll start off with A right here. And then all we do is we add negative three plus four. So negative three plus four gives you your new position. And this little mark right here means prime. So I'm not changing the size of the angle, I'm just changing its location. So we don't wanna call it A anymore, we wanna call it A prime. Then we do the same thing for this one. We take the seven, we add negative five to it, we end up with a positive two. So our next point would be one comma two, where it used to be negative three, seven on the coordinate plane, now it's one, two. And then they do the same thing with negative one, zero. I add four to the X value. I add negative five to the Y value. And I end up with B prime. And then I do it again for C prime. So you'll see that your shape moved from its original position. This was its original position to its new position of A prime, B prime, and C prime. So we just slid it down. Because remember, it went... Um, three units to the right, sorry, four units to the right and five units down. So if you look at the picture, that's exactly what it did. So if you look at it, it went five down, four units to the right. Okay, then we do it again. This time we're going Three units left would mean negative three on your X value, two units up. Up means a positive two. So I'll start with D. And uh, so D is negative one comma five. I'm gonna add that to make its movement. So it'll end up with negative one plus negative three is negative four. Five plus two is seven. That's my new point. And then E would go from negative three, one on the graph. Go ahead and add negative three comma two to that. And I end up with negative six comma three. And then F would go from four comma negative four, add negative three, and I would end up with one comma negative two for F prime. I forgot to write my primes in there. So this is D prime, E prime, and F prime. And then I would have my new picture right there. So I'll go back so you can look at it again and see what I did for each one of them. All we're doing is adding and we're based on what it's telling us here. If it's left or right, that's our X value. Think about X values go left and right. Up and down, that's our Y values, because Y values go uh, vertical movement. And then we just add it to our original values. So I'm gonna erase that, show you the picture so you can see. 
So it went three units to the left, so you can see one, two, three, and then it went two, uh, this is actually it right here, because this is D prime. So it went three units to the left, one, two, three, and two units up, one, two. New position. That's how easy it is. Translation is easy. Um, this one, it's going to ask us to reflect over the y-axis. Okay. Without having a picture to show you, I'm going to give you the rules for it. So, if you're going to reflect over the x-axis, I want you to visualize the x-axis. So the, here's the x-axis right here, where I drew the arrows, right? Think about if your shape is right here and it flips over, it's gonna end up down here. And if you notice, I went from this position right here, let's pretend like that's my original, to this down here, because I flipped over the x-axis. So I didn't change my x value. My x values are exactly the same. What changed is my y values, and it changed to be the opposite of what it was. So when you're reflecting over the x-axis, you're going to keep the x value and then you're going to take the opposite of the y value. So for this one, um, that's your x-axis. For your y-axis, if you're flipping over the y-axis, you're going to do the opposite of what we just wrote here. You're going to keep your y-value. Makes sense because you're going over the y-axis. And you're going to take the opposite of the x-value. Okay? So... This one I'm reflecting over the y-axis, so we've got m as being negative 8, 6. I'm reflecting over the y-axis, so m prime would be keep the y-value, take the opposite of that x-value. So that would be your um, reflection over the y-axis, would be that one. Then I would go on to n prime, would be keep the y value 9, take the opposite of the x value, would be negative 5, positive 9. O would be negative 2, 1, and P would be 10, comma, 3. So again, here are your rules. It's pretty easy to remember. If you're going over the x axis, keep the x value. If you're going over the y val axis, keep the y value and take the opposite of the other value. So I'm going to erase this and go through it. So there you go. And this one, again, you keep the y value of 9, you go the opposite of the x value. You keep the y value 1, go the opposite of 2 becomes negative 2, and p prime, keep the y value 3, and go the opposite of the x value. That's a reflection over the y-axis. So here it is. So think about, here's the y-axis. It's on the y-axis, so what you're going to see this picture do is reflect on top of itself, like that. So it just flipped in its opposite position. Remember, it's keeping the y-value, so nothing changed with up or down. See, it's still in line, up and down. What changed was the x-value changed, that's it. This one wants you to do it over the y-axis again, but let's pretend like it's the x-axis this time for something different. So if I wanted, if I'm at Q, I can write it right above here. Q prime would be keep the x, change the y. Keep the x for our prime, change the y. Keep the x, change the y. Keep the X, change the Y. Those would be all of my new values if I was reflecting over the X axis. Keep the X, change the Y. 
This one wasn't changing or wasn't flipping over the x-axis. They were doing that y-axis again. So this is what it would look like if it went over the y-axis. A rotation. Okay, there's several rotations that we need to talk about. There's 180 degree rotation. So let's just talk about that one first. If you're rotating 180 degrees, the only thing you need to do is take the opposite of your x value and take the opposite of your y value. That's it. So this would become four comma negative five. This would become two comma negative four. One comma negative two. Three comma negative one and five comma negative three. It's pretty easy. The hardest part is to remember which one goes with which one. So keeping it straight, the translating, all you're doing is adding or subtracting. Reflecting, you gotta remember, reflect over the x-axis, keep x, change y. Reflect over y-axis, keep y, change x to be the opposite. Rotating 180 degrees, both numbers change to be the opposite. So if you look at this rotation, there is a 180 degree rotation. Is gonna put it in what quadrant do you think? Hopefully you said quadrant four. So we rotated all the way around. So it became, so where D was negative three, positive one, now it's positive three, negative one. So see the opposite. Okay. And then they're going to have you do another 180 degree rotation, but you really need to learn about 90 degree rotations. There's two 90 degree rotations. There's 90 degrees um, clockwise, and there's 90 degrees counterclockwise. Okay, so I want you to think about how they're going. So counterclockwise is going this way. Clockwise is going this way around, okay? And 90 degrees is only half of what the 180 degrees is doing. So when you go your 90 degree clockwise rotation, what you want, it's, it's gonna be very different. And if I had a picture, I'd show you, but you're gonna switch the coordinates and then multiply the new second by negative one. So I want you to think about going clockwise. So think about a coordinate grid and we're here. If we go clockwise, we're going down here like this and it'll be tall. So what you're gonna do is if you have two comma negative one, you have to flip them like that. And then you're gonna change this one to be the opposite. So you got to flip and switch, flip and switch. If you're going counterclockwise, you're going to do the same kind of thing. Whoops. You're going to flip and switch, but this time you're going to switch this one. So both of them are flip and switch, flip and switch. This one you flip and switch and change X. So counterclockwise, flip and switch and change X. Clockwise, you flip and switch. And you change the Y to be the opposite. It's a lot to take in. So again, you have translate, simple. You just add or subtract based on if it tells you to move left or right or up or down. So then you have your reflection. When you're reflecting over your X axis, you keep the X, change the Y. When you reflect over the Y axis, you keep the Y and change the X. When you rotate 180 degrees, you're just gonna change both of them to be the opposite. The only time you flip the ordered pairs is when there's a 90 degree change. 
90 degree clockwise, you flip and switch the Y value. 90 degrees counterclockwise, you flip and switch and change the X. Now you have to remember how you can get that remembered. I think they're all pretty easy to remember until you get to the 90 degrees and then it gets a little tricky. So it's about you figuring out the best way, like a little trick that's gonna help you remember that. And that's it. It's a little bit more to that. You can find more information out in your book. I would also recommend that you could watch other videos um, to help you out like Khan Academy.